Oh man, man oh man oh man. I am a tad exhausted right now, but uh, I wanted to make some videos. I can't say enough just how much I love making videos. Uh, I find a great pleasure in it. Years ago, if I would have imagined that I would have gotten in health to this degree, into health to this degree, natural healing, and years ago I would have never imagined that this is what I would end up doing. Um, I find just massive amounts of pleasure doing my best to try to help other people with things that I've learned that, about that have helped me. So, intuitively I feel like if this stuff has worked for me, I do believe that it can work for you as well. If you practice it diligently and don't give up on your health, you name it. There really is nothing more fascinating than, than radiant health. Because real health is enlightenment, and enlightenment is just a form of super consciousness where it's just amazing to me how much potential we have as humans to evolve into something much greater than we currently are and that's why I'm always trying to implement new things into my life natural measures to try to raise my health levels because in my opinion based on my own experiences trial and error you name it the cleaner I get the more my consciousness mirrors that state of cleanliness and I'm pretty amazed at uh, some of the states of consciousness that I've achieved through naturalism. Um, states of consciousness that I don't believe I would have ever achieved if I would have stayed on the standard American diet that I was on, you know, up until my early 20s. Um, once I had my first full-blown kundalini awakening, everything really changed for me. I became dangerously obsessed in enlightenment and kundalini and, you know, Drunvalel Melchizedek wrote once in one of his books, I think it was The Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life, Part 1, that when someone has a real kundalini awakening, it engulfs their entire life. They will spend their entire life trying to achieve that state of consciousness again and again and again. And for me growing up, I had many hobbies. Um, you know, I'd get into astrology, I'd get into... You know, reading about the pineal gland in, in high school. I was interested in Buddhism at one time. You know, I experimented with Christianity at one time. I had all these different little um, hobbies. But it wasn't until, you know, my first full-blown kundalini awakening that I achieved my real hobby. You see, all my hobbies in the past, all my interest, interests in the past were short-lived. I'd be really interested in astrology for like three months, then I'd shift to something else, and I'd kind of move around my interests like a uh, a ball in a, ping, a pinball machine, just constantly moving around, and cycling through different things. But once I experienced Kundalini, once I experienced the Merkaba, the aura, the enlightenment of the sacred centers, the meridians of the body, that's when I became diligently obsessed with my only hobby that I have to this day. I mean, I can't even, nothing else really interests me at this point. And years after my Kundalini awakening, awakening, I'm just as obsessed, I'm more obsessed with it now. So he is very right, Junvala Melchizedek, when he says that once someone achieves Kundalini, they're going to do everything in their power to achieve it again and again and again and to just become, I've become engulfed in the, the lore of Kundalini and all the legends of it and to know firsthand that this is a very real thing I mean wow there's a difference between believing something is real but there's a there's a difference between hoping that something is real than believing it through experience so once you experience certain states of heightened consciousness and you realize with totality that they're real, it changes everything because now you know these things are real. They're not just things that you're reading about in books and they're not just uh, daydreams that you dream about, people dreaming about becoming enlightened, this and that. Many people believe that enlightenment is achievable, but they don't know that it is with exactitude because they haven't achieved it. So I'm not trying to get on this channel and boast or brag, no. I'm just being completely honest in front of this camera, and if I can't do that, what the fuck is the point of having a YouTube channel? So, I really don't care if people think that I'm, I'm bragging by saying I've, I've experienced Kundalini. No, I'm just being honest. 
and people handle my honesty in different degrees. Some people can't stand me. Some people love my channel. Some people are kind of on the fence about my content, you name it. But it is what it is. I don't really care. But man, I mean, after my first Kundalini Awakening, I was given, during the Awakening, a handful of uh, visions um, about diet. I was transported into the astral plane and I learned lessons from the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the angelic realm, the telluric kingdom, the elemental realm, you name it. Um, man, oh man, oh man. And, uh... You have to excuse me again, I'm tired. This is just a free-flowing rant. If I stumble, I don't really care. But just knowing that this is real, Kundalini, the, just it, it's opened up such a creative outlet in my mind just knowing how far we could evolve with this spiritual science. If we learned to get back into this broadband of consciousness of Kundalini, with Kundalini Awakening... Planet with planetary kundalini awakening, it is my humble belief that we can fix the planet. And when I, don't, I don't mean to say we can fix the planet like there's something wrong with it. I just mean we can fix what we've done wrong to the planet. Everything wrong with the planet right now is the byproduct of mankind. So The consciousness that's created this problem needs to be elevated so that we can get out of this hell realm and that's what it is I mean there's chemtrails everywhere there's so much pollution in the sky I mean compared to 20 years ago when I was like a seven-year-old child looking up at the sky I mean th this isn't fucking embarrassing what I'm looking at right now it's fucking embarrassing and what's even more embarrassing to me is seeing all the people who don't even give a shit so I think it's commonplace for people in this matrix due to their conditioning I think many people have they just have Stockholm Syndrome. They've learned to accept the way things are and they've learned to kind of enjoy it. I think people like being slaves, to be honest. In fact, there's many great quotes from kings of the past and, you know, people in high states of power where they say publicly that, you know, people love kissing boots. People loved being pushed around. People loved becoming servile. And people love placing their power in the hands of other people because people like feeling comforted by being regulated and people like being defended by the illusion of the, the military and all this other shit. So, I mean, they're hitting us hard right now. They are suppressing the expansion of consciousness here on Earth. There is a spiritual war going on right now, not only in the spiritual planes, but in the physical plane. I mean, it's obvious. What they're doing to the skies, what they've done to the water supply, what they've done to nature, what they've done to the animal kingdom, the, the just the destruction of innocence here within the animal kingdom. It is true that animals are... For animals, this earth is hell and men are the demons punishing them. And uh, there's so many things that the average slave-minded individual is not aware of and they'll go their entire life not even being aware of these things. Most people will never really have a truthful glimpse at just how hellish this world is for other people and animals you name it because we've been lulled to sleep and we believe that our little lives our cute little lives where we get to pay our taxes and we get to go to church on Sunday and we get to go to the stores we think that we're free but we're not ladies and gentlemen and what makes me sick sickest about human consciousness is how perverted and degraded it can become <laughs> so I, I, it's hard for me to even stomach being around typical people nowadays because I can just see how unaware they are and how they choose to be unaware. Because we are in an information age, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody has information at their fingertips. If you want to know the truth, you can research and you can find it. You've been bombarded with a fake version of history that has molded the way that you view the world. Everyone's just bought into this illusion. And they are the byproducts. They are walking amalgams of their conditioning, their programming, and their bad health. So. <clears throat> I mean, I mean it, it frightens me just how far we've fallen in terms of, you know, mental integrity, spiritual integrity. 
at some point it just looks like people just aren't going to wake up. I used to, in my early 20s, think that people, you know, I used to think that five years ago at this point, let's rephrase that. Five years ago, I thought that at this point here in 2016, there would have been some massive changes here on Earth. But no, things are getting worse daily and very rapidly. So... I do believe, after a lot of trial and error, that the only way that you can really fight this war that we're in right now is through taking care of yourself properly and cleaning your vessel, cleaning your mind. And uh, chances are, once you do those things over a period of time, people will gravitate towards you and they'll want to do the same thing with their health. You know, because what's more important than taking care of your health and, and getting your mind right? So. In order to get the mind right, we're going to have to desire to do so. And there's an intimate connection with the, in the health of the mind, with the health of the body. And the health of the body is largely dependent on the quality of foods and fluids and thoughts that you put into it. And uh, I just see so much uh, ignorance everywhere. I see these demonic fast food chains just, they're popping up everywhere, man. They're on every street corner. I mean, I, I go up north often. It's a two and a half hour drive. And, you know, on at every exit where there's food, it's all junk food. They're all junk food chains. Serving you the most low quality food that you can ever even... I don't think the, the average person just even has the slightest iota of a clue of how disgusting the food that they're eating is because again you can take a hamburger patty put it on a bun with some onions and make it look cute and innocent but if you knew how just how insidious these this, this fast food is man it is it is a consciousness degrading medium and people think it's just fine and fucking dandy to have a dollar menu and a value menu you have any clue how low quality the food must be if they can make money off selling you a fucking hamburger for a dollar they're making significant amounts of profit off the dollar menu which means that the ingredients in the foods are probably worth like two cents that little cheeseburger that you're having if they can make large profits off these low cost foods imagine how low grade that meat must be. And let me tell you, the meat that you're eating is just a bunch of ground up animal parts with fillers pressed into a something that resembles a patty. But there's they've found they found so much disgusting shit in fast food and meat. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen, it's 20 fucking 16. It's almost 2017 and you're still eating fucking fast food. I'm not going to name any any of the chains. You know what I'm talking about. It's everywhere. Gas stations sell nothing but beer, cigarettes, junk food, sweetened junk. Just, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. But there's a cultural fascination with junk food. I mean, you just put on, turn on the fucking TV during the day or at night, and you'll find just tons of channels venerating junk food. People traveling all across the United States to try Philly cheese steaks from every state. And it's like this cultural obsession of these sick people making this shit like, look like it's just the epitome of freedom. You live in the United States of America. You have the right to do anything you want. You can eat as much junk food as you fucking want. You can tune into the TV, all the food fetishizing on the television, on these fucking disgusting shows and all this shit. It's disgusting absolutely disgusting and to know that all this shit all this food is the byproduct of tortured animals 95% of it you gotta be you just you've lost your mind you lost your goddamn mind and I don't know if you're gonna be able to get it back this far into the into the game ladies and gentlemen and this is a game <clears throat> man oh man oh man But it is fun to play this game from the perspective of trying to evolve yourself 
it is very fascinating to give a shit about the animal kingdom and the earth and to join sides with the earth. Which side are you going to be on? And you have to choose. Because the planet's going in two directions. Consciousness is going in two directions. It's going towards goodness and righteousness, and it's also going towards debauchery and unrighteousness. And you get to pick. And what's sad to me is many of the people who have chosen unrighteousness actually believe that their actions are justified and righteous. And that's how deep the mind control goes. Where people think it's okay to support these large corporations that murder, torture, and destroy every little sacred thing on the planet. I mean, it's, it's, you've got to realize that if we keep going the direction that we're going down, there's not going to be much in the next, you know, 30 or 40 years. Come on. Not only is nature being defiled, I mean, every day more and more rainforests, more the, the oceans are polluted, the air, you name it. But as time goes by, each generation of humans, the genetic code is getting weaker and weaker. And proof of that is statistics, ladies and gentlemen. Statistics do not lie. And statistics prove that just about 1 in 50 children nowadays has autism. Compare that to the early 1900s when autism was very rare. It wasn't a common thing to hear about autism. Now it's fucking everywhere. It's all over the news, the television. I see autism support groups at the libraries I study at. I see it all over the place. Mental illness has spiked massively. Physical illness has spiked massively. There are so many prescription drugs being written every day for so many issues that are spawned from unrighteous living, bad foods, you name it. So let's take a look at it. Autism has spiked massively. Obesity has spiked massively. Mental illness has spiked massively in the last 60 years. Uh, there's more cancer now than there ever was. There's more diabetes now than there ever was. There's more heart disease than there ever was. And we're supposed to be in the land of opportunity and we spend more money on healthcare than any other nation in the planet, yet we're the, one of the sickest? Do you have any clue what that says? Do you, I mean, do you have any clue how profound that is that we spend trillions of dollars every year on healthcare and fighting cancer and, and all this other shit, yet there's more of it here than anywhere else? You're being duped and you've been duped massively. You've been put to sleep. So just by default, by being an American and doing what everyone else is doing, eating all the shit and doing all the other garbage, chances are you'll, you'll fall into that statistical bracket of unhealthy people. And it, it's just, it's so much fun to try to defy, how, how can I put this? It's, it's a lot of fun to walk in the opposite direction of the herd and, uh, you know, do everything you can to take your health back. And man, is it illuminating to be healthier than the public around you. I mean, you can really see with your blinders off once you start getting the, the, the right elements back into your body and your body starts rebuilding itself and cleansing itself out. You can really start to see all the sickness around you and it's very unfortunate. This camera's going to shut off and start re-recording. I don't know why it does this. It's kind of irritating. I spent $300 on this camera and it shuts off at 19 minutes or so and picks up again. Irritating. But, I mean, right now, I see a handful of edible herbs, leaves, and even barks that can be consumed to make one's health better. But, I mean, we don't, most people aren't even aware of the trees around them, or the sacred herbs, the sacred medicines, this living pharmacopoeia of natural medicine. I mean, there are so many things that we could be consuming that we drive past every day and we don't even know that they, they're edible. So, hang with me. I'm going to let this video get to 20 minutes. So, uh, I know it's recording again. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Just waiting for the camera. about 15 seconds now we will pick it up again